harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan. And this is Charlie, we're your host for today. And we just wanted to share a really exciting testimony. Um, someone well, emailed into Forge. Like just, just so we're reminding everybody, uh, our ministry is all about kingdom laborers, which yes. are ordinary everyday people who are carrying the good news of Jesus wherever their feet take them. They're people who love God, love others, and carry the good news of Jesus wherever they go. And uh, in light of that, there was this student. Right. So uh, this person heard several Forge speakers at a, a summer camp, and um, these speakers had some conversations with her uh, after services, after they were done preaching. Uh, there's always opportunity to pray with and encourage and discuss topics uh, with event participants. And so uh, this particular student decided to send a message into Forge after the fact. And here's what she says. She says, hey, I'm, I'm in high school and I just wanted to share with you a, a really powerful story of what God's been doing in my life. Uh, she says, I talked with several Forge speakers at summer camp this last summer and uh I'm a girl who was going from being homeschooled to taking classes at a public high school in my town. Um, and she shares that she was so nervous, like in those conversations, like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to face this. I don't know what I'm going to do. What are people going to think about me? And she says this, well, God has been doing a lot since that conversation. He's done more than I can say to strengthen me and has given me favor with the people I've interacted with. I've even had some spiritual conversations with those at my school. Uh, a few of those conversations stick out, she says. My very first day at school ever at the age of 16, most people have at the age of five, <laughs> uh, she says, I met a couple in the library. I struck up a conversation with them and God moved and blessed in that conversation. I've been friends with them ever since. Almost two months later after that conversation, I revealed to them that I'm a churchgoer and a follower of Jesus. And by asking several questions, I found out that the guy was an atheist. Mm -hmm. uh, the girl who was dating that guy was a churchgoer, but she stopped seeking God. She stopped going to church. She pulled back because of some drama uh, at her church and after meeting this atheist who she started dating. Mm -hmm. um, so, interesting side point on missionary dating i don't recommend it uh anyway missionary dating is when you date a non-believer in order to convert them to christianity i'm not saying it's never worked there's plenty it worked of stories, on your parents um but there are there, there are, are a multitude of stories where it that goes it does the wrong it, yeah. direction or it it just ends in heartache yeah so <laughs> and i'm saying from experience i've done it in my past yeah multiple times um i can't really speak for much of anything good that came out of those seasons of life except for I learned what not to have in a relationship <laughs> so anyway no. back to the story here back to the testimony so this girl writes um, during another interaction I had the opportunity to share my testimony and the gospel mm. similar ways that Forge teaches that we've been sharing on this podcast fuel for the harvest of hey go and share what Jesus has done in your life so she did exactly that and they continued to have some conversations about God after the fact. Um, she says, my, my friendship with this girl grew a lot, and she began to trust me and mm -hmm. share her life with me. The second day of second semester, the guy and the girl broke up, and they had been very close with each other emotionally and physically, and the girl was devastated. But I was there through her, with her. I was there for her throughout the first day and the next. She was really struggling in this time and she shared her sadness she shared her feelings she shared her struggles and 
over the next month, this opened the door for some very deep conversations about Jesus and the church. Mm. A week or two later, she decided and agreed to come to youth group with me. After her third week at youth group, on the drive to her house, she told me that she had given it some thought and she decided that she wanted to follow Jesus. Hmm. Praise God. She's all, all, all exclamation points. She says, I was elated and could not contain my enthusiasm. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. When I jumped out of the car to give her a goodbye hug, I did a happy dance. Hmm. <laughs> uh, that's good for her. I'm not going to do a happy dance. I'm not much of a dancer, but I'm, I'm thankful that she did. You know, God, you, God likes dancing. You dance on the inside. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as my mom and I drove home, we were passing my high school, and I started praying over it that more students would find Jesus. Mm. This girl is the first person I have ever had the honor of leading to Christ. Mm. So cool how God called me from homeschool to high school, and look at what he has done Mm. all the trouble was worth it even if this one girl ends up being the only person i influence well praise the lord amazing yeah uh there's just a few things that stand out to me about that story the first is this girl is ordinary yeah like very nothing particularly exceptional about her other than she follows jesus right like just like the the in the book of acts the followers of jesus they people from the outside look at the follower of Jesus and say, hey, those people have been with Jesus. Yeah. And that's what they take note of. Exactly. She was your typical homeschooled high school girl. Yeah. And fearful. Yeah. To enter the public realm. I can relate with that. Like, there's nothing more intimidating to me than just saying hi to a stranger. (laughs) That's less and less true the more and more practice I get. But still, even as a quote unquote professional minister slash missionary guy like it's still very difficult for me to say yeah, hello to strangers it's, it's uh or if you want to go to an in-depth topic it's like what am i going to say yeah. what's the next question yeah my mind is blank i don't have anything else to say <laughs> oh no uh yet she broke through this fear right and said i'm gonna go she got wise input from people and she went and she began to not only uh overcome her fear but to bring kingdom advancement into a place of darkness amen and say you know what i'm gonna be here i'm gonna make use of it so i'm gonna share jesus with these people Mm. and god's moved Uh, all she did was share here's what god's done in my life Mm. he can do it in yours too and it's led to the lost being saved Mm. and transformed by jesus receiving his hope his goodness his joy and uh, I've seen that as well, where it's like, I don't know, I don't have much to offer. I don't have much to say. I, I don't really know what to do, but I can tell you about Jesus. Look mm-hmm. at what he's done. Just that, that verse, sir, that they would see Jesus, mm-hmm. just that they would see Jesus. And I think sometimes if we act like we know everything too professional to this, I got it figured out. Who are we really pointing to? It's like, right. I think God delights in showing up through Uh, the inadequate, ordinary nobodies. Yeah, in fact, I would even go so far as to say that, like, if you don't know, for example, various evangelism strategies, like, if you don't know the Romans road, or if you don't know, like, the, the, I don't know, the the four spiritual laws, laws or whatever, the, the, the long and the short of it is, it's, well, that's okay. You don't really need to know those things in order to share what Jesus is doing in your life with other people. Um, I mean, the other thing that struck me about this girl was how she chose to be with people in the midst of their difficulty. Like, you're not going to reach anybody from, I don't know, if you're not engaging with anybody. I don't know how, I was thinking of a more crass way of saying that, but... You're not going to reach anybody if you're not engaging with anybody. And if you begin to engage with people, what you'll discover is that it's messy. Like there's, it's never like this clean cut, like punch out of work at 5 p.m. That's not how relationships work. They, they get, they take up a lot of time. They take up a lot of energy and sometimes they take up Mm. less time and more time and so on and so forth. This, this girl was there for that other girl who got broken up with. She said all day, the first and the second day. She was there for her. And she didn't minimize her suffering either, from what we can see. 
she was just there with her in the midst of her difficulty. And I imagine that that gave this first girl, this girl who shared the testimony, a lot of credibility yeah. in the eyes of the second girl. It gave her a platform to proclaim. Yeah. And uh, I actually was thinking about that. This last week I was driving in the mountains and saw all these people holding signs on a corner dressed in their fancy nice suits coming out of a church. And it was, I don't remember what it said. I mean, it was nothing, it wasn't horrible. Um, nothing that they wrote was false. Anything I would disagree with, but I was like, ah, really? Like, that's your strategy to reach the community? Mm -hmm. Hold hold a sign that says, like, you need Jesus and, he, like, you're going to go to hell without him. And, okay, like, nothing is inherently wrong with what you're doing. Nothing that's on your board is false. It's not heresy. But, like, that's your tactic? Mm -hmm. I almost want to pull over and get out and be like, man... What's up, guys? I love Jesus, too. This is awesome. So how many people you led to Christ doing this? Well, part of me wants to get out and say, hey, tell me about Jesus and see what they do. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. So um, I think if you really want to lead people to Christ, share a compelling story. Mm. Whether that's your testimony and or what Jesus has already done on the cross and his resurrection. Both. Share both. Mm. Um, and that can happen in public proclamation with a crowd of people, with a small group of people, one-on-one, -on -one. Mm. Uh, but it, it takes engagement with people. Mm. Absolutely. Actually getting that time. Right. Um, versus, I, I mean, I don't know. God can use anything. He's spoken through a donkey. Oh, uh, absolutely. He's spoken through me, which sometimes I act like a donkey, and uh, I'm sure he can use those signs, but I, it just makes me question. It makes me wonder. Right. Especially if we're going to be followers of Jesus and in the scriptures we're encouraged to imitate Christ so if we're going to be imitators of Christ how did Jesus reach people we almost never see Jesus writing on cardboard and flying a sign like I'm not trying to be hyper judgmental or anything I'm just trying to say hey if we're going to use Jesus's method what was Jesus's method from what I can see mm. he got up close to people he engaged people he had conversations with people he knew their name he understood where they were coming from, and he met their need yeah. where they were at. And uh, sometimes that was one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes that was a small group. Sometimes that was a meal table. Sometimes that was a massive crowd. Right. It, and so uh, I don't think Jesus is against any of that. Right. But all of it was with a heart of love for these people and, and looking at their eyeballs. Well, and I imagine that the people flying the sign on the corner don't lack love for their community. I hope not. <laughs> I, I imagine that the reason that they're standing there, well, my heart, my hope is that the reason that they're standing there is because they love their community. I they, hope so. They want, they want people to, I, so I let, have, let's not just say that everybody <laughs> doing it that way is... Oh, by yeah. no means. Yeah. I have seen some signs that would absolutely be non-loving to the community. Yeah. Uh, where their sign literally says, God hates dot, 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 and all sorts of things are written on their sign. And I'm like, Wow. That is, um, that doesn't look like the heart of Jesus to me. Right. But these were not those people. These were neutral. These were, everything was truthful, but hmm, they just made me think. And it was a warning, you know. Parts of it. I mean, yeah. they had all sorts of different ones out there, so. Yeah. Anyway, so I love what this girl did. I'm so thankful that she shared this testimony with us. I mean, it's very inspiring. Yeah. And it, it inspires me as an ordinary, everyday person. And one life at a time. Yeah. She says, even if nothing else god sent me for one yeah just like jesus telling that story of the shepherd he'll leave the 99 sheep to rescue the one, the one. Mm -hmm. and i think wow so often when we hear that and we sing the song about it you know this famous worship song recently uh god will climb any mountain break down any wall this that and the other it's true but we often make that about us mm. and uh yes it's about his character but then we only think about ourselves Recently, I've thought about others mm. when I'm singing those words. Like, God, are you sending me to go after these one, to be your body, your hands, your feet? Uh, you're calling us. Like, we should be willing to go anywhere, to break down any wall, to climb any mountain, just to see one come yeah. to know you. And that's essentially what this girl just said. Yeah. I, even just for this one, it was worth it. Yet her heart is for many. She's praying for the whole school. I can guarantee you she's sharing with more people, but even just for the one, I'll go. Absolutely. Forgive me for this 
unprocessed thought, so it might come out a little bit jumbled, but you cued me into something that I've been thinking about a lot recently. So there's this idea in me that the reason that we hear these stories of evangelism and we have our various reactions. So some people feel inspired and some people feel defensive and some people feel excited and some people feel whatever, you know, however people feel and respond to a story like this. I think that it's very common to think, well, I could never do that. What is it that gives rise to that feeling inside of people that I could never do what this girl did? Is it the complexity of it? Obviously not. It's not very complex. Sometimes it is, though, because well, we've made it overly complex to where people think, I don't know enough, I can't do it. Yeah, but in, <clears throat> I mean, specifically in the case of this girl, sure. she shared her story. She just is like, I love Jesus, and this is how Jesus has changed my life. Hopefully, all people who follow Jesus have some degree of that kind of story. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's not like, well, he saved me out of drugs, but maybe it's like, well, you know, like... I used to be really arrogant and now I'm more humble or I used to be really fearful and now I'm not so fearful anymore. All that to say, I don't think it's the complexity. I think maybe what we're seeing is a, 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 a rubber hit the road moment where people are discovering their true colors. If, if your response to this is, I could never do that, I would... I would encourage you to ask yourself the question, do you really believe in Jesus if you could never share Jesus with somebody else? Now, I know there are those out there listening to this potentially right even in this moment. You have anxiety. I get that. I've thrown up many a time in social situations. I get what that's all about. Uh, maybe uh, you struggle with language. Moses totally resonates with you. He gets that. What I'm asking, though, is, here, here was my experience, at least. When I encountered the living Jesus, I couldn't help but start opening my mouth to share about him with others. Like when he, the change that was happening in me, like I couldn't keep it inside. Is it possible that we haven't really been changed by Jesus? Is it possible mm -hmm. that we really don't actually believe in him if we're unwilling to open our mouth and share him with others? And man you're missing out on so much joy and so much fun. Those who are actually all in for his mission are having the most fun yeah. in the world, I think. Having the most joy. Like, look what we get to do, man. This is awesome what God's up to, and I can't believe I get to be a part of it. Yeah, This is amazing. Um, you're missing out on the greatest adventure ever yeah. if you're not involved in this. And you don't even know what you're missing out on if you haven't jumped all in. It's true. I remember the very first person that I led to Jesus, and I was like, oh my gosh, God just used me to do that? Yeah. Like, I resonate with the words, like, I was surprised that God used me to do that. But he can. I think all that's required is a willing and submissive life. Are you willing? Are you submitted to his command and obedient? If you are... Uh, what could stop you? What could stand against you? Like, it, if God is for us, who can be against us? Not Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think the story speaks pretty well for itself. And uh, we hope that you're encouraged by hearing what God is up to uh, in someone's life you've probably never heard of, probably never met. And in a high school, you've probably never stepped foot in. Mm -hmm. God is at work. And he's at work in your er your areas where you go to work, where you play. Uh, where your family is. He's at work in your region. Will you join him? Um, thank you so much for joining this episode of Fuel for the Harvest. Uh, just a reminder, please unsubscribe and resubscribe. It helps the algorithms for uh, the messages to continue to get out there and reach more people. Um, it's really exciting to see several other nations jumping on board. Listeners from more nations are increasing. And uh, so thank you for those who are tuning in. I hope you have a great Reese. Great. Bah. Great rest of your week. I can't speak. Need some more coffee. God bless you. <laughs>